In this video, we're going to look at adding callbacks and using functions as options. So why would we want to use callbacks? Well, we could use callbacks to allow us to control the widget and provide some status uh, when the state changes. So if the state of the widget changes, we could allow callbacks to give us some sort of status on what's happened. And then we can also use functions to control the widget. So what, the, what might that look like? Well, when we want to define options as functions, the option name corresponds to an event, and then these are referred to as callbacks. So earlier we had created some events that we had bound or we had binded it to our button, and we had to prefix that with prefix activated. But when we define our options as functions, then it corresponds to an event name and we don't need to enter a prefix. So let's have a look at what this means. So here we've got our widget being created, so custom zoom that button, and then we had our widget event prefix, which we'd used earlier for doing our custom event prefix here. What we're going to do in, right now is we're going to pass in some options. We're going to create a, an options element. And then in that, we're going to say, OK, we had previously activated event. And we're going to say, OK, now what we're going to do is we're going to define some options as functions. So we're going to define activated. And then what we're going to do is we're going to basically set it to this no op value. And in this case, this is basically useful for when you're creating a plugin, if you want there to be optional callbacks. Uh, in the case that no callback is given, this no op can be passed in and it can execute. So that's a just a neat way of in the event that there is no callback specified that this kind of empty function will run. So we've got activated and then we could create a deactivated. Okay, and let's make that the same. Okay, so we've got an activated and deactivated options, and they're basically defined as functions. And we're going to use these in a second um, as callbacks. So how would we use that? Well, if we look up here uh, earlier on, we had the call to create the button, so button.set button, and then we passed it in some options. So what we can do is we have defined up here that we have options that are functions, activated and deactivated in our widget definition. So down here, when we call or create our widget, what we can say is, okay, let's define the handlers in here for activated and deactivated events when the widget's created. So what we can do is in here, we can say activated. Okay, so that's our callback. And then what's the callback function? Well, callback function is basically a function that takes the event uh, and the data. And then from there, we can basically do whatever we want. So in this case, we're just going to console.log activated and we'll put the data. Okay. And then what we can also do is deactivate it. And we'll create a callback function for that. And then in that, we'll just console out deactivate it just so we can see what's happening and the data. Okay, so what we did previously was we had created a custom event that when you mouse over the button, it triggered our activated event, which is our custom event. And then what we're doing right now is we're saying, okay, let's pass in our callbacks as options. So we can say, okay, whenever somebody is on the Z button and the activate event is triggered, then execute this callback which is basically console.log or deactivated, same thing, console.log. Okay, so now the next thing we want to do is we want to save that. And then we can open up our page. Just check. Okay, we've got a syntax error on line 22, expected identifier. Let's just double check what that is. Okay, forgot to put in a comma. Let's save that. Go back and refresh. Okay, so green up is not defined. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, what have we got? Deactivated. So dollar dot. Okay, just want to make sure. J jQuery method. Okay, so now we've got our Z button widget. If we hover over our Z button widget, we've got activated. And over here, you can see we've got the Z button widget and the prototype, the object that's passed in. So we've got basically it's activated, and then the text, which is the data, is a Z button widget. But we've got no deactivated event. And why is that? Well, because we haven't defined a deactivated custom event. So here, 
Earlier, we created a on mouse enter trigger and activated, create an activated event. What we're going to do now is we can basically copy this, but we'll say instead of uh, on mouse enter, we can do on mouse leave and we'll say trigger deactivated. Pass it the event and our data, which is the text tag. So let's save that. Let's just double check. We want to remove our semicolon there. Let's hit refresh. Okay, so now we hover over our Z button widget, it should be activated. And when we hover off, it's deactivated. Great. So there you go. That's basically a way that we can add callbacks and then use functions as options for the widget that we can then call back later. A uh, really neat way of uh, simplifying your callbacks and making it possible in your creation of your widget to actually handle and create your callback functions in there.